We have looked at how the decimal number system works, binary numbers, and hexadecimal numbers. The last number system to cover is the octal number system. If you have seen the videos on those other number systems, you're probably able to figure out decimal and binary conversions on your own at this point. But we'll be going over all of it in this video. And to start, we'll look at how to count in base 8. Just as the name suggests, there are only 8 digits in the base 8 number system. We start with 0 and count up to 7. At this point, we add 1 to the next place value, this is the 8's place, and continue counting, 10 through 17, so on and so forth. Octal numbers can look like decimal numbers, they just never use the digits 8 or 9. In order to distinguish an octal number, we use the subscript 8. However, there are other conventions that are sometimes used, such as following the number with a lowercase o, or a capital Q. Converting octal numbers to decimal is the same as converting any number system to decimal. We simply take the number and write it using the sum of weights. The weights of each place value in an octal number is shown here. This is the same as decimal or hex, except that the weight has a base of 8. So given an octal number, such as 2374, we can easily convert this to decimal by summing the weights of each place. Now if you're a little confused as to what I mean by this, check out the Unit 2-1 video where I go over decimal numbers and explain how place values are constructed and what all these terms mean. For now, it's good enough to know that the 2 is in the 8 to the 3rd power place. And so we have 2 times 8 to the 3rd power. 3 is in the 8 to the 2nd place, so we add 3 times 8 to the 2nd power. Continuing on, we add 7 times 8 to the 1, and 4 times 8 to the 0. This is what the sum of weights looks like. Simplifying a bit, and we have 2 times 512, plus 3 times 64, plus 7 times 8, plus 4 times 1. One more simplification will give us 1024, plus 192, plus 56, plus 4, and our decimal equivalent is 1276. Going from one number system to decimal is always fairly simple, but going from decimal to a different number system is always the bigger pain. That's what we'll cover now, going from decimal to octal. Again, this is going to work just like the other number systems we've covered. We're going to use repeated division, and we'll do this using the number 359. If you saw the Unit 2-7 video on hexadecimal numbers and conversions, we introduced a neat little trick to the repeated division process where we multiplied the decimal to find the remainder. Since calculator use is pretty much universal at this point, I'm going to use this method of finding the remainder in this example. So let's get started. Remember that we need a remainder column to keep track of our octal number. We start by dividing 359 by 8. This gives us 44.875. .875 is the remainder, but we want this to be a whole number remainder. So we multiply this by 8, and we get 7. So in other words, 359 divided by 8 gives us 44 with 7 left over. Okay, with our 7 in the remainder column, we move the 44 down to be divided by 8 next. 44 divided by 8 is 5.5. .5 times 8 is 4 remainder. Move the 5 down and divide it by 8, and we get 0 0.625. 0 0.625 times 8 is 5, so that is our remainder. And now that we have 0 in the whole number place, we're finished with our repeated division. The remainder is our octal number. Remember that our last division is our most significant, and so the last remainder is the most significant digit of our number. In other words, when we write out our octal number, we go from the last remainder to the first. So 359 in octal is 547. Now, on to the big reason 
to use octal numbers. Just like hex is convenient because each digit is easily represented with just four bits, octal is convenient because each digit is easily represented with just three bits. So let's start by looking at the digits 0 through 7 in binary. And as we can see, only three bits are needed to represent all the octal digits. Of course, these are the same digits in decimal as well, so it's not like we're memorizing some new binary numbers just for the octal number system. So to represent an octal number in binary, all we have to do is write the three bit binary number for each digit in the number. Let's convert 7526 into binary as an example. 7 in binary is 111. 5 in binary is 101. 2 in binary is 010. And 6 in binary is 110. Now we have our binary number. Okay, let's go backwards from binary to octal. Here's our binary number. Now the first step here is to split this up into groups of three bits. Now that that is done, we only need to convert each group of three bits into the octal number. Pause the video and see if you can do it yourself. Okay, 011 is 3, 010 is 2. 000 is 0, and 100 is 4. Our octal number is 3204. That's all there is to octal numbers. Now it's not used quite as much as hexadecimal, especially in computers and microprocessors, but if you're working with digital systems, eventually you are going to come across octal numbers. Luckily, they're very simple, and by knowing everything that we know having to do with binary, decimal, and hexadecimal numbers at this point, fleshing out octal numbers should be a piece of cake. That's going to be it for this video. Until next time.